All right, let's get right into the video. And this is update number one. People ask me, well, how in the world can I use a watering can to help filter my rainwater? Here you go. They wanted to see it in action. And here I'm showing you on a very rainy day exactly how it works. This is one extreme frugal idea. You don't need fancy filters. Just a sprinkling can, some spouting, and a rain barrel. Extreme frugal number two. I take tall grass and I feed it to my chickens. That's one way I help in conserving chicken feed. They eat grass and they eat all kinds of kitchen scraps. Chickens love grass and while you can't feed them totally grass, having a little bit of grass sure does help them and it helps keep that chicken feed bill down. Another extreme frugal thing I do is I find all kinds of food that is really old and expired. I ask people and family members, hey, do you have any food that is really old and expired and you're not sure you want to use it? I take it and I use it for my chickens because it's great yet. So the oatmeal and we have so much rice. As you know, last year a farmer gave a whole bunch of rice away and I gave some to neighbors and we kept a whole lot of it. I think I had over 700 pounds of rice. But I put some rice in my chicken feed and that way I can stretch it. And so we put this in and what would last me about six weeks will last me almost three months by stretching it that way. When I use my rice for long storage, I always add some bay leaves to it. And that's what you see the girls picking out of it. I always put bay leaves in my oatmeal and in my rice for long-term storage. Some of the oatmeal they're using is from 2010. Imagine that. 2010. That's just another extreme frugal thing I do to help stretch the bills here on the homestead. It's been really hard to find bedding for my chickens. And I'm going to share with you a little trick that I learned many years ago when money was extremely tight. Money is tight again and so what we do is we shred newspaper. We shred all kinds of my mail that I get, the junk mail, and I use this for my chicken bedding. It helps freshen it up. Now I normally don't use this in the winter time because it really doesn't help keep your chicken house warm like straw would, but it's perfect in the spring and summer. This is gonna help stretch my budget and also it's gonna help me in times like this when you can't get out in the store and you can't buy anything that you wish. All right, so here we are in the chicken coop. More and more people in this day and age are getting chickens. They love to have chickens. Chickens are so easy to raise, and I have a lot of videos on coop care and chicken in a playlist, and so I'm not going to really talk a whole lot about chickens today. The sun is really, really bright, so I'm trying to stay here in, a little bit in the shade. One thing about chickens and having a chicken coop is you want to have ventilation, and so when you have a nice day, you want to open the coop up. You know what? Sunshine and a good breeze is the number one disinfectant. And that is really, really important, is to have sunshine in your coop. Sunshine is the number one disinfectant that you could have. You know, the sun is something that, the sun is something that God created for all of us. It gives us vitamin D, but it also really disinfects the things that we have. So what I'm gonna do today is, I'm gonna just red up the chicken coop. And what does redding up mean? Um, Redding up is a Dutch, a German word, a Pennsylvania Dutch word for, I'm just going to spruce it up a little bit. I think that's a word that's English. So I'm going to spruce up the chicken house a little bit, clean it up, fluff it up, and the chickens are just going crazy here. <laughs> I don't know. They're just trying to get in on the act. So I'll show you what I'm done, but... Here I go, everybody. Yes, I have a mask, and let's get cleaning up. Woohoo! Yahoo! <laughs> it's really hard to film in confined areas like this, but 
what I'm doing is I'm gonna take the shavings and I'm going to take the old shavings out and then we're gonna use some of these beautiful shredded newspaper it is the number one thing that you can use if you are low in income and you need to have something for animal bedding people also use this when they have cows they use this for all kinds of animals on a farm let me see if I can tilt this camera a little bit so you can see what I'm doing So we're just going to take your newspaper shavings and we're going to just put it in the chicken house. Now let me put all these eggs in my pocket. I didn't realize I had so many. One thing about newspaper, it absorbs odors. And it's soft, the chickens like it. And it's a way to recycle. And what you do is, it will break down with all the manure, and you can actually put it out in your garden. It's amazing. And I actually have enough, I can actually do the floor with it. Let me get out of the way and I'll show you what it looks like. Here you go. When you're in a pinch, shred up some paper. It can save you a lot of money. It's great for the environment. And it's also great for the chickens as well. Yeah, pretty, pretty, pretty. And like I always say, bye everybody. <laughs> and my day just got started. Hey everybody, if you like videos like these, why don't you do me a big favor and give me a thumbs up and let me know that you like videos. If you like videos like these, these are more so my friends, you watched this video. If you liked it, could you give me a like? Could you give me a thumbs up? Maybe you could share my channel among your friends on Facebook or Pinterest or any social media. By sharing my channel with other people, that's the only way that I can grow. It's just a small little bit of something that you can do as a token appreciation for me giving you these videos free of charge. Bye everybody! Once again, it's time for my grandma Fanny's diary, and we are on April the 9th, 1943. Fanny writes, early in the morning I washed and ironed, and then we sowed tobacco seed. Later in the afternoon, we bought two steers and two lambs. The steers were 390 pounds, and we bought them for 41 cents a pound. And the lambs were, one was white and one was black.